I don't know what the green filth is all about, but it's no match for the bike farmer. Take that, mystery boogers. Hey, bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. We got ourselves a very basic bicycle here. This is actually a viewer's bike. He lives 45 minutes away and he's just not comfortable going into the local Trek dealer with this bike without any spandex or anything. It's just not his jam. And you know, he likes what I'm doing on the channel. So he drove 45 minutes to drop this bike off with me to have me look it over, give it a tune up. Yeah, I don't know, he told me a few other things about it. He's retired and has some old colleagues that come up and visit and he goes for bike rides with them you know my kind of story just general purpose having a bike in your life and wanting it to work right i can tell it's been used it's got uh, replacement tires on it that look to be in great shape i don't think it's going to need any parts the brake pads still look good enough um, there's a lot of good enough for who it's for kind of stuff going on with this bike so it's perfect for the channel. I was really excited that I had this bike and this story. I'm filming this one the day after I dropped the bike shop versus cycling store. So I'm hoping to publish this one right after that because I think it fits in perfectly. It just kind of is a nice little small town example of how this goes. You know, these new cycling stores, these new corporate stores, they're just very sterile and fancy looking. And for basic stuff like this. I mean, this is a $100 tune-up. It's worth every penny because he knows this bike is good. They might have a perfectly good service department there and have no problem at all with this, but you know, he just didn't feel like he belonged in that store, you know, and he's got to go 45 minutes to find one that he does feel good in. I know, I mean, I get lots of cyclists that come in here and they're like, ooh, I don't want this guy working on my fancy bike, you know? I mean, it just doesn't look like that around here. So, I mean, it goes both ways and I don't try to be everything to everybody and don't expect everybody to do it my way. I'll give you some close-ups on what we're looking at here and then uh, get to going on it. We're gonna clean it, lube it, and adjust it. I think there's plenty to go with here, so kick back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, you can see it's got some real entry level cranks and you know, this is the entry level Shimano derailleur. I'm sure it works great. Um, there's no spoke protector. We should probably put one on. Um, it looks like a freewheel and it's just a, an old six speeder. Um, this Altus derailleur probably works great. Um, I'm not too concerned with this fraying. I'll probably just twist it back up and put a cable tip on there. I see some rust forming on these brakes. Um, yeah, and I can, these are pre moving pretty sluggish. So I don't know, maybe I'll pull those off and grease them. I don't do that very often, but might be worth it on this bike since Gary came all that way. Nice dirty hub, pretty standard. Um, this kickstand is loose, so the bike keeps tipping over. Uh, we'll get that tightened up. The bottom bracket feels good. The headset feels good. Um, yeah, you can see, I mean, this is what you're gonna get when you have a 30 year old bike. The grips and the shifters look to be in pretty good shape yet. And uh, yeah, these are not the original tires, but they have a nice center ridge for just general cruising and knobbies for going around corners and gravel. Yeah, I mean, I think just cleaning, lubing and adjusting and it'll come right back to life and be better than new when we're done. And here we go, per the use, we're gonna disconnect this rear brake and pop the wheels off. So I can just tell by looking at it that that kickstand bolt is not 14 millimeter like all the rest of them. It almost looks like a 17. And I guessed correctly. You gotta be careful that you don't go too tight on those. That aluminum will just snap all of a sudden. This uh, frayed cable situation is something that freaks a lot of people out. They see that and think that the cable's bad or needs to be replaced or something. But really, you know, everything's clean up until the clamp. So it's just this tail afterwards. And if you just take it and twist it back together, 
Sometimes I'll get the pliers involved, which I was about to do there. You don't really need to, but you can kind of take the pliers and do that. And I'll twist it up the rest of the way. But this one, I'm going to get it to that point. And then grab my Hosan cable cutters, which there's a, an affiliate link for that in the description. But that cuts it nice and clean. And then you have a cable tip. And this is the fancy schmancy Park Tool EP1 made for this purpose. It's a very extra tool, but I have one. And so I'm using it because I'm a fancy, fancy boy. So there's a few things we can do to kind of clean these brakes up. I always have wire brushes like this on hand because a lot of the surface rust you can kind of get off just with a wire brush. Not have to think too hard about it. It's pretty hard to get down inside there. You know, sometimes you can do that, but it's not really worth it. We'll flood that with tri-flow at some point and keep the rust at bay. This one's actually clean on the inside now. But if you do that, you can get them pretty clean. And aesthetically, everything's more pleasing then. All right, and so both of these, you know, they're just not uh, moving freely. I could just drop some tri-flow down in there and get those moving freely. Let's do that just to show you. Actually, it's probably a good idea to do it because I'm gonna end up taking these bolts out, but you know, if you kind of move things back and forth and drop some tri-flow in there and work it, eventually things will move freely again, right? So if you just wanna get it working, you can do that. You know, that's how easy it is. So a lot of these bikes, if you just want to get them working, and I mean, that'll probably work really well just with this thin little tri-flow lube for a good long while, honestly, you know, wake them right back up. And that kind of flushes all that out. However, in the interest of showing you something new and doing it right the first time, This one's missing its washer. I'm gonna see if I can find a washer for that. But we'll take these bolts out. And then, yeah. Sometimes you do this and you'll see all kinds of corrosion and you know, the brake posts will just be full of rust and filth or goop or gunk or something. Get access to the posts. This is a good time to do a little cleaning, a little flossing. But if you take some emery cloth, you know, sandpaper will work, steel wool, wire brush. Emery cloth works the best. If you just clean the posts up, Furniture polish. Grease them up good. Oh, I was looking for my other caliper, it's still hanging out here. So there's a little post here on the caliper, and then there's holes in the boss. There's three of them, and you can set your tension. And this one, it actually has this piece here where you can put a 10 millimeter, whoop, you can put a 10 millimeter wrench on it and dial in the adjustment that way, the spring adjustment that way. So there's no, you can't lock it into one of those holes. I just did a terrible job of explaining that, but I'll show you in a minute. But I'm gonna set this one up on the max tension, I think. Yeah. That's gonna give that brake a better feel. Let's, let's clean up those bolts. So this is actually, what do they call it? The screw pliers. 
and it's made to hold on to that. And I mean, man, does that get a good grip. I had a viewer recommend that, and I went and bought one. Engineer screw pliers. And if you do a lot of this, get one. I found a washer in my bin. a little bit of surface rust here. I probably should have cleaned that up before. Oh yeah, that looks kind of rusty too. Um, I'm go hit that with the wire wheel. Yeah, so I hit that with the wire wheel and then this goes around the spring here. And that, that's our um, tension adjustment that I was talking about. I'll get in there, there we go. So this guy, you can put a wrench on it and adjust the tension. I'll show you that in a second here. All right, it's way cleaner. And therefore, way more better hay. I should get a little, my little Dremel tool with that little brass brush out just so I can go bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm really going the extra mile here for Gary. There you go, Gary, you're welcome. <laughs> I mentioned in a comment on my last video, I think this morning, that I'm not much for small talk generally in the bike shop you know when I'm busy and just wanting to get my work done but uh, Gary was a good one to talk to marine biologist professor George Costanza so all the moisture will come in from here and settle down in there this actually is moving pretty smoothly but you can see that everything's really dry. So we're just gonna drop some lube down the tube. Right, we'll let gravity and surface tension suck it down in there, give it a little bit of help, some slight agitation. And then you can add some from this side too. That's moving way more better, hey? I should probably just clean the whole frame, but we could wipe as we go here. So this, you can push in that front derailleur, or rear derailleur, create enough slack to remove that piece of housing. It's one of my favorite little tricks. That loosens up the whole system. There's a little cable guide underneath the bottom bracket that the cables go through. It's a good idea to get a little drop of lube there. And I just kind of lube the front derailleur from behind and it kind of sucks down in there. So something that I don't show often, but I'll show right now is you can push the front derailleur up. That creates enough slack to disconnect that one. Take that cable down and lubricate everything. Pop her in there. Smooth as silk. And then with the rear derailleur still or the cable still loose. Yeah, this cable, you can see it's even got some rust on it. It's bone dry. 
absolutely bone dry. You can take some steel wool. Just knock off that surface rust. Of course, you could replace this cable, but replacing cables on grip shift is a pain in the butt. It's a lot of work for what you get out of it. And all you gotta do is add some lube, and that is slicker than snot on a doorknob. Definitely good enough for who it's for. All anybody would ever need. Rear brake cable. I could feel it. It's uh, There's no rust or any kind of corrosion going on inside there, so we're gonna have a really nice feeling brake system on this bike. Um, front cable is always hard to get. Not always, but most of the time. You don't have as much room, as much wiggle room. But we got gravity on our side. Just kind of let it soak down in there. Then drop in some lube on the ferrules where they go into the frame. Helps keep the squeaks and creaks away as well. That is what it is, folks. You know, people get really bothered by that saying the it is what it is, but I don't mind it. Was it Aristotle that said A is A? It's the same thing, like, it's true. There is one truth in this world. It either is or it isn't. For everything else, it's either unexplained or an opinion. And further, you know, people have their beliefs, right? Everybody wants to protect their beliefs. Well, those are my beliefs. It's like, yeah, but if it's not actually a fact, and a fact is something that can be proven right or wrong. You can have, you can make a false statement of fact, and just because you believe it to be true doesn't make it a true statement of fact. And if you just believe it to be true, it, I don't care. I do not believe that I have to respect your beliefs, you know? I just don't think so. There are unknowns in this world, things we can't prove right or wrong, and if we, need to make up our minds and believe in something instead of just saying, I don't know. You know, if you're really convicted. Oh, dropped a water bottle screw. You know, if you really have some major convictions and really feel strongly about needing to believe in something, believe something to be true, or I guess more power to you. I just think it's easier to just say, there's no way of knowing that for sure. You could say, I'd rather think this, I'd rather believe this to be true. That's an opinion, you know? Give, it, give yourself an opinion. You're entitled to that. Yeah, I mean, definitely you're entitled to an opinion. Everybody can have an opinion, you know, prefer something, prefer something to be true, to prefer to believe something. You know, you can take the easy way out if you want. Believe the easiest thing. Go for it. That's your prerogative. But don't tell me that it's true. And don't tell me that I have to respect your belief that it's true or untrue. You know, I got my own, I, I get to make up my own mind, right? So here's my philosophical commentary for today. Got those water bottle screws cleaned up. Sometimes I use the electric screwdriver here. I'm pretty good at doing this. And I don't think the electric screwdriver really fit on this frame, the step through frame. Gary don't care that it's a girl's bike. I know that much. Not something he cares about. It's a little bike. So I got a little bit ahead of myself there and reconnected the rear derailleur cable. All the derailleur cables and all the lubed cables are now reconnected. Brake feels good, derailleur feels good. Um, actually, I'm gonna do, show you one thing on this one right quick. So this brake pad, now we could just replace the brake pads, but it's just kind of worn unevenly because it wasn't set up right 25 years ago or however old this bike is. But you can just take a file 
flatten things out. And that helps a little bit. I mean, it, it resurfaces the brake pad for a hot minute. You know, it might help things from not squeaking, not squealing when we set it back up. But that makes things flat. And there's plenty of life left on these brake pads. You can see this front brake is pretty much in the exact same condition as the rear one. And I'm going to take these bolts out without hitting them with tri-flow first. See how easy they come out. Sometimes. It's just fine. So you've already seen me do this a couple times now. I'm just gonna go do it. Okay. As we go, my, my grandma ate a lot of prunes. She would always say, wiping as we go. <laughs> oh, dropped a spring thingy, what do you call it? Hot dog, a little bit of grease on the posts and the threads. Get that one started there. And use the top hole. Gives us the most tension. We'll have infinite adjustment on this side. We'll dial it right in when we get there. We're gonna do the wheels first. All right, get the wheel up here in the stand. Seems to be pretty true. Kind of filthy and ugly there, isn't it? But Dawn Power Wash is probably enough to handle this job. Pretty dirty rag. Lawson. polishing just in case somebody with a discerning eye like mine looks at this bike like, what you didn't even polish the hub come on what about this slightly rusty skewer lever through and polish this rim. Take a couple swipes on the side. That kind of pushes all that foam into the middle, in between the spokes. And I go through with my finger wrapped in rag and floss between each one of the spokes. Yeah, this one's gonna look like new when I'm done. This bike is old and basic, but man, it's good. It kind of falls into the, they don't make them like they used to category. Really don't. I think these old bikes are far more durable than the new ones. But I guess I don't know for sure. It just seems that way. 
ones are fancier. They ride better, they're more comfortable. It's definitely advantages. You know, the new comfort bikes like this, um, they start about six or seven hundred bucks, but they have 700C wheels, big plump tires on them, one by drive trains, big wide gearing and back. Um, much more comfortable geometry, better saddles, better grips usually, you know, the basics. But, I don't know, when I mean, they're disc brakes, and the wheels I'm not impressed with. Like these, these aren't really nice spokes, but you know, they're just good spokes. I don't know. You know me, I'm a little into the old stuff. A little bit of a curmudgeon that way. So that wheel's done, and we're gonna pop that free wheel off and put on a brand new spoke protector. So this is the free wheel removal tool. Put it up in your vise. You have to take your skewer off for this one. That's okay, it gives us an opportunity to grease it. An opportunity we wouldn't normally take. Okay, and then give it a one, two, three. Okay, here's the remnants of the old one. There, there's a good argument for why, why we hate dork discs is because they get brittle and break. And then while I have access to it, I take some Phil's Tenacious Oil and let that tenaciously work its way down into the bearings back there. Mmm, greasy. So the donut style ones are for free wheels. No prongs. The hub feels pretty good on this bike. It could be taken apart and greased and cleaned and all that could happen, but it's not necessary. I'm not feeling like it'd be worth the effort. Drop fills in the other way here, too. And put some fresh grease on the skewer just for good measure. Grease on those threads there. Okay, get this front wheel. We're gonna do pretty much the same thing. Go through and clean it up. I got some citrus degreaser here. It's not the really nasty stuff, but it kind of leaves like an oily film afterwards. And uh, that's another good way to clean the outside of these hubs and get that discoloration. Hey bike farmers, I just wanted to take this lull in the action to let you know how much I appreciate that you've clicked in to watch this video. Now that I've been at it a little bit, I'm starting to learn why everybody's always asking for more. The AdSense money is just barely enough to make it worth starting a channel. If I want to sustain this for the long term, I'm going to need everyone's help. Now don't get me wrong, your attention is enough. Don't feel obligated to give more, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. You can always click the super thanks, that's the heart with the dollar sign in the middle of it, or consider a monthly membership. The monthly membership will give you a little star next to your name, and if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments, I'll see the star, and when I see it, I'll definitely give you an answer. You'll also have access to a little more behind the scenes action that non-members can't see. With all that said, thank you so much, and let's get back to some bikes. So I'm just gonna go through and I've wiped off a lot of this bike as we've gone, but we can go through with some fresh furniture polish and a clean rag and really kind of pick up all the rest of the 
the ick. And it really doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of polish behind, it'll soak right in and it doesn't do any harm. Underneath there's some tremendous filth. I don't know what it is. Looks maybe some tar, you know. I'm not very much convinced at all that I'm gonna get any of it off. In fact, I think what I'll do is just kind of try to scrape some of it. Well, it's coming off with a scraper. So let's just, let's use the, oh yeah, it's like turning green with the Dawn Power Wash. Look at that. Wonder if that's paint. What the heck is going on here, Gary? What am I doing to your poor bike? Look at that, it's turning green. This is some serious ick. What have you gotten yourself into, Gary? It's a good thing the bike farmer loves you. Well, at least loves your bike. I don't know what the green filth is all about but it's no match for the bike farmer. Take that, mystery boogers. It's kind of fun to squirt some lube up your kickstand's butt too. <laughs> that must be why they call it the Wildwood. All right, let's turn this thing back into a bicycle. We'll do that by putting two wheels on it. Pretty sure Bicycle is a Botswanian word, meaning one less than three wheels on a cycle. Imagine if you just threw a dart at a map and you ended up on Botswana. I don't know anything about Botswana. I mean, maybe it's not all that bad, but you'd probably be like, what the heck? I gotta go to Botswana now? What the hell's in Botswana? Is it even a country anymore? Seems like one of, the, one of those that maybe isn't a thing. You never hear about it. So I'm just gonna lube the chain. Kinda let it sit in the derailleurs. Let that soak in while we do the brakes. So there's really quite a bit going on here with these brakes. I happen to be pretty experienced and good at cantilever brakes, canty brakes. You can see already right off the bat that this brake pad is not hitting flat. This side is actually really quite good. I'm gonna make a, just a slight tweak over here. Move on, because you can get yourself in trouble pretty quick trying to really make it perfect. Take a four millimeter, put it on that side, a 10 millimeter and put it on this side. And then loosen up the nut back here. And that allows everything to move. And that's all fine and dandy. But what happens is, is you know, somebody adjusted this back when and cranked everything down and it kind of made grooves and settled in and indexed every component in this whole system and so it makes adjustment in the future really difficult because it wants to go back to that spot and so holding this wrench that holds everything from to keep from moving You've got like pitch yaw and tilt going on here that's really good I mean, it's definitely way more better, hey. Okay, so now the, the tension adjustment, this 10 millimeter wrench goes right on this flat and you can increase the, intention, the tension or decrease it. So if it's decreased, 
then it only pulls from the far side there. And as I increase it, it pulls the system towards me. And once you get it where you want it, you tighten that one down. And that holds the spring tensioner in place. And we want a little bit more, I think. So adding tension, you don't have to worry about that bolt moving, loosening it. You do have to worry about the bolt. But I'm gonna crank that down a little bit more just to be safe. And Papa don't preach, I'm keeping that baby. And while I'm looking at this rusty bolt, one of these we drop a little bit of tri-flow just in all of the spots. Anywhere where water wants to collect, That feels good as new. And for good measure, and with the old primitive barbaric methods of cable tipping, put a brake cable tip up here. You can even wrap that around if you want, but that's good. Oh, here's, here's a green booger. Ran through some tar. It was probably, uh, yeah, you can see it all over the tires. Um, Chip seal, we do that a lot with our roads. Put down a little bit of tar and then gravel and then drive over it. You know, drove over some chip seal. It's nasty. All right, let's work on this front brake. Terrible, terrible everything. I'm gonna give myself a fighting chance by just adding some tension over here to this side. So we're gonna loosen the caliper bolt move that add some tension okay so one thing I'm seeing here um, is you got one two lines showing and here you've only got one so I'm gonna move that brake pad in so at least the calipers will be in the same position that'll tighten the brake a little bit because it feels loose So once we get it, the pad on the post properly, okay, I'm gonna tighten this nut back here, finger tight, which is easier said than done. Okay, and then I'm gonna adjust my angle a smidge. I'm checking to see how it's hitting the rim. It's hitting a little high. I'm gonna slide it down on the caliper. Still hitting high. Okay, this is how it, when it gets tricky. This is what gives people the fits about caliper brakes. So I'm gonna take some tri-flow and put it all around in here because that's just gonna help everything move freely. Then I'm not fighting friction. All right, I'm gonna loosen things way up. Get things sliding around nice and slippery. Now I'm gonna tighten it back finger tight. I think the pad wants to be up here and kind of dive down to hit flat. It's like finger tightish, Fing, fingy tighty. See how much better that's working already? Am I good or am I good? I'm not going to give you any choice in the matter. You can decide though if I'm good or if I'm good. Man, I'm good. What do I need you for? I can just tell myself. Look at that. Look at that. They don't call me Canty Master Q for nothing. I love that sound. I mean, that's the most satisfying sound in all of bicycle mechanics. It's got a good... Oh, dropped a five millimeter. It's got a really good feel to it. Plenty of stopping power for Gary's slow bike here. It does feel like, I mean, they're hitting at the same time, but I could add a little tension on this side. I don't, I really don't wanna, cause it's so good. But here we go. I really don't bots wanna do it. Okay, stop futzing around with it. That's really good.
We like it. We move on. Okay, so this uh, chain has been soaking in its own filth for a while. I could have used one step. Maybe should have used one step. I used Tri-Flow. Works pretty good. Yeah, that feels kind of gunky. I'm going to use some one step. It's a cleaner and degreaser. It really cuts through the crap. That's what it does. Yep, that was the right call. Just feels way better through the rag. Tri-Flow's a little thicker, and it's got the Teflon in it. But the one step really is good for this sort of thing. I just kind of go back and forth like that, and uh, that's how I clean my chains. I'm kind of talking loud because my air compressor is going off. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I should shut that door when I do these videos, especially at 9 o'clock a.m. when I have my timer set to go off. You know, when you have uh, such a high taco diet like mine, you learn to just kind of wipe as you go. <laughs> and sometimes you get some dripping on the rim. You gotta wipe that off too. This is the most awkward way I've ever put air in a tire in my entire life. And we all know the rule about air in the tires. Make it firm. You just don't want your tires to be squishy. I bet it shifts miraculously. It's a little slow going down. Oh, it's not hitting all the gears. Okay, we got something to work on here. First thing I'm checking is cable tension and it's very tight. Cable tension's very tight, and you can see it's not in the highest gear. So I'm gonna make sure that the, I got my cable housing in all of its happy homes all the way. Okay, I'm gonna try this barrel adjuster, which does not wanna move. All right, we're gonna loosen the cable, because I can't figure out any other way to loosen it. Methinks somebody's been futzing. Yeah, somebody's been futzing. Gary, were you futzing? That's okay. Never fear, bike farmer's here. Uh-oh, brake pad's rubbing. I'm gonna have to fix that too. All right, cable tension's right. Well, it's a little tight. It's a little hesitant coming down. Let's see if I can get that barrel adjuster to turn at all. I got like a half a turn. Yeah, it's finicky. I can see why Gary was futzing with it if Gary was futzing with it. And if it wasn't Gary, maybe the local shop was doing it. Just checking out the front here. It's non-indexed. We can tighten that cable a little bit. So cable tension doesn't matter on front derailleurs if it's not indexed, if it's a friction sh system like this. The ratcheting that you hear is just part of the grip shifter, but cable tension doesn't matter as much if you're just, just pointing the chain onto the gears. It's all about the limit screws. So as long as it's not over shifting or under shifting, you're in good shape. So it's a little sluggish, but it's working, it's working pretty good. The only thing that we could do to improve it would be to replace the cable and housing, but I think it's good enough for what it is and who it's for, so I'm gonna leave it. These water bottle screws need a little drop of juice. I, I like to drop juice on the pedal spindles, or at least on the flats. Little final touches. I don't think we put air in the front tire yet. Yeah, that's squishy, and we wanna make it firm. Don't want to ride on squishy tires. There are use cases that uh, where you benefit from softer tires. Fat bikes, mountain bikes, that sort of thing. Gravel bikes. You know, get a tubeless setup, lower pressure. But for us regular folks, 
Let me just make them firm and go for a bike ride. Oh yeah, this brake pad is rubbing. Let's uh, take a closer look at that. Right there. So, Canty Master Q failed miserably. My mother always said, you keep working at that bike shop, you're gonna grow up and be a failure, kid. Here it is. She was right. And just like that, I'm the champion of the world. I heard a little bit of a squeak. So we'll go through with some emery cloth. I'm gonna go all the way around the rim and do this. Back and forth. You can see how much comes off. That's just old brake material from years gone by. This is what uh, Albert Einstein was talking about, you know, when he was doing all that space-time stuff. You know, he realized that if you just keep riding your bike, using the brakes, that the brake pads wear onto the rims and stick there, you know, later in life. And then if you clean them, it's kind of like going back in time. And then somehow there's space involved in the speed of light and you square that and you get energy out of that and you can make bombs and win World War II. That's how that went. You know, this wildwood really brings out the wild in me. Ooh, it's still squeaking. Still howling. I wonder if we can ride those out in a test ride. Let's go outside. It's nice out. Sun's out today. Oh, it's very pleasant out. Looking forward to going for a bike ride today. I wonder if I can find a friend to go with. That'd be nice. Okay. So sometimes you can just ride the howl out. Oh yeah, feels like I can. Yeah, if you put it in the granny gear, then you ride it. Squeeze your brake lever. You can squeeze it hard. And then light, and I can feel it grinding. What you're doing is you're just kind of adding brake material back to the rim and finding the happy, happy spot. It's a little slow to shift, just like it was in the stand, but it's functioning properly. It's just got a little hesitation. Like I said, it's good enough. And I'm hearing another, I'm hearing rubbing again. All right, it's gonna go back in the stand. We gotta put this back in the stand. Don't always get it right the first time. All right, so most of what we have to do here is the rear wheel. We got a fresh piece of emery cloth here and we're just gonna put it in between the brake pad and the rim and go around and really grind off a bunch of material there. What was happening was, is when I was in the granny gear, there's so much torque that it was twisting the wheel in the frame and then the tire was rubbing on the kickstand. That's what it was. Usually with some brute force, you can move it over where the crank isn't gonna hit it, but enough where the tire isn't gonna hit it. Okay, back outside. Okay. It appears that we made the brake situation worse. But nothing's rubbing anymore. So, solve one problem. Okay, we're gonna tow the brake pads. That's all we have left. That's our only other option. I'm just kidding. We're all thinking what Gary's thinking. Just give me the new brake pads, you dumbass. So here we go. We'll just put on new brake pads. Hey bike farmers, a quick note. If you're looking to get serious about fixing bikes at home, look no further than the Park Tool AK5 Toolkit. I have an affiliate link in the description. This kit 
provides all the basic tools you'll need to tune up just about any of the bikes that you see on this channel. It also comes with the Big Blue Book of Bicycle Repair written by Calvin over at Park Tool. Also in the description are affiliate links for all the basic things that I use. The grease, the degreaser, the one step, the Dawn Power Wash, Behold. If you see anything else that I don't already have a link for, let me know in the comments so I can add it. I hope these affiliate links will help encourage you to take this on as a hobby or even start flipping bikes for a living like I do. Yeah, so you can see by how much I struggled on that side, and I still don't have it right, that how hard it can be to replace these brake pads which is why I resisted for so long. I think we finally got it. And that's not squeaking. And one final thing I noticed with that test ride is the headset was a little loose. That was all it took. We just gotta tighten the lock nut down. And there we have it, bike farmers. We've got a Diamondback Wildwood. Entry level, basic bike, million years old. You know, really all Gary wants to do is keep moving. You know, he's 75 years old and his doctor says you gotta keep moving. And this should get him out, you know, in the evenings, go for five, 10 miles, 15, if you're feeling frisky. And uh, this is all you need to do that. You just go nice and slow, soak it in, look at some birds. You know how it goes. You've, watched, you've seen me do it in my shorts. That came out funny. My YouTube shorts. I really love projects like this. Um, I still love these bikes. I think it's great that somebody pulls one out and it's actually salvageable and actually worth the hundred bucks. Yeah, if you've watched this far, that's unbelievable to me. I mean, I just think that's great. And so does the algorithm. So it really helps the channel if you watch these videos. So thank you so, so much. If you actually liked it, click the like button. That also helps a ton. And subscribe if you haven't, because there's lots like it and lots to come. If you really liked it, which I presume you have, because I was, you know, very entertaining and showed you lots and you learned a lot and I really went the extra mile for you today, you can send me a tip via Super Thanks. And a lot of people send five, 10, 15, even 20 bucks. And uh, I call it taco money. I got El Mariachi across the street and I, I get tacos. I love them. I eat a lot of them and they're great. And they're like five bucks a piece now. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that really, really does help me. It's uh, now that the channel's getting big enough, it really adds up and it feels good and makes me think that I'm appreciated and I love that. Um, or you could consider a monthly contribution with a sustaining membership and just sign up for it. I'm not really great at it, but I do periodically post, you know, little projects I have going around here and um, if I'm out and about, you know, kitty pictures and that kind of thing. So um, the membership is something I'll be working on and uh, who knows what it'll develop into. It's growing right now, so jump in on the ground level and we can make it what we make it. And the number one thing you can do for yourself is click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.